in everyone's life, there will come a time when you will disagree with someone. You will not agree to disagree agreeably, which to me is really kind of a foolish statement, but you will be at odds against some point of view or some perspective that someone else has. You will have your position and they will have theirs. You will feel as though you need to justify or rectify or somehow resolve the issue, but sometimes you may find that in reality both positions can be right. You see, someone may be going through a learning experience as well as you're going through a learning experience. You're learning how to be patient, speak the truth in love, and let it go. To not react to actions or reactions that may be provoking you in some way to use your emotion rather than your devotion to God. The same thing is true about the other person. The other person may be just as right in their perspective according to what they know to do according to what God is showing them and revealing to them by way of his Holy Spirit. Jesus said it this way. He said, in the world you shall have tribulation. He said, there would come a time that people would stumble and you know be provoked and, and fall, but woe unto them that you know caused those stumblings and you know how sad it is when brethren who ought to love one another to a degree that they could be in the unity of the faith can disagree on particular points and still allow each other to be separate. Think about it for a minute. You got twelve guys and you got three of them who want to be in charge. Don't tell me there wasn't friction going on inside those 12 people. Yes, there was. You got Judas who's doing his own thing. You got Peter and you know James and John who want to be in charge. You got the mother running around trying to set up her own little storybook. And so, frankly, Jesus was trying to bring to light a lot of times in his statements the fact that we won't all get along, but we still work at loving one another in the unity of the body of believers because it's the love of God that draws men to repentance. The world would know we are his disciples and that we have love for one another. I can completely agree to love anyone on Facebook or social media and wholeheartedly disagree with the post that they may present. They can state something that to me is contrary to scripture and if a reader read it without knowing the backstory, they could be deceived or they could be misled or they could be for some reason you know hurt by the information that's being presented so I comment on it I'll say false and I'll leave it at that unless the person wants to discuss it then I'll go ahead and feel like it's an open door and I pray about it I pray about each and every occasion to make sure that we're speaking the truth in love without there being a reaction necessary I'll admit in every occasion most people when they're told no or they're told false or they're told something that goes against their grain will react negatively and sadly they don't understand that you're supposed to be able to say yes or no and leave it at that you're supposed to agree or disagree and leave it at that you're supposed to really to put it bluntly I mean most people that know me figure this one out pretty fast you just really need to get a sense of humor about it because there's nothing so serious when it comes to eternity that can't be allowed the humor of looking at it and just going, oh well, let it go. <laughs> it's like, who cares? If you disagree, don't comment, don't read it. Go on to something else. If you agree, great, comment or go on to something else. The point is, always make your actions determined by your information you've taken in your presentation you've taken with that information to go to God with it, as James said, to ask God for wisdom, because he said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who prays not to all, but give it to all men liberally, then make sure that God is telling you what to do with that information, as in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, to trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into your own understanding. That's a biggie. You don't think it. You ask. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. Let him direct whether you should post, comment, or in some way respond to information that's being presented to you in a false or negative way. Because the reality is we live in a fallen world with human nature such as it is that people are going to react in extreme ways. And you see it getting worse today than you've ever seen in society before. 
a person will be upset and go out and take a gun and shoot each other because they own guns. The foolishness is to own guns. Why would you own guns when you don't know your own mindset of your anger management or your anti-violence training? Are you a person that can be provoked? If you are, you shouldn't own a gun, period, at all, none whatsoever. You shouldn't allow that type of temptation to be brought into your situation. Jesus said in the prayer to our Father, lead us not into temptation. And most people that take their rights that they have take upon themselves temptation all about them. I mean, to me, it would be a fool that would say an ex-drug addict should be hanging out with drug addicts because the temptation is there. The same thing is true about violence. If you're a violent person and you have the temptation to get involved with violent means, like a gun or a weapon of any type, then guess what's going to happen sooner or later? Jesus said it, and that's what he meant by, they that live by the sword will die by the sword. Don't fall into that temptation of trying to exercise what you think is your rights to vocalize your opinion when you haven't prayed about it. Let God lead you in every situation and circumstance. He will. He said he would. He promised he would. That's what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is all about in James 1, 5. It's having a personal relationship with God. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. Genesis 33, 24. Left alone. What different sensations those words conjure up to each of us. To some, they spell loneliness and desolation. To others, rest and quiet. To be left alone without God would be too awful for words. But to be left alone with him is a foretaste of heaven. If his followers spend more time alone with him, alone with Jesus, we should have spiritual giants once again instead of spiritual babies. The master set us an example. Take note how often he went to be alone with God. And he had a mighty purpose behind the command, when you pray, enter into your closet and when you have shut the door, pray. The greatest miracles of Elijah and Elisha took place when they were alone with God. It was alone with God that Jacob became a prince, and just there that we too may become princes, men and women too, wondered at Zechariah 3.8. Joshua was alone when the Lord came to him in Joshua 1.1. Gideon and Jethro were by themselves when commissioned to save Israel, Judges 6.11 and 11.29. Moses was by himself at the wilderness bush, Exodus 3.1-5. Cornelius was praying by himself when the angel came to him in Acts 10.2. No one was with Peter on the housetop when he was instructed to go to the Gentiles, Acts 10.9. John the Baptist was alone in the wilderness, Luke 1.8d. And John the Beloved alone in Patmos when nearest to God, Revelation 1.9. Covet, in other words, cling to, look to, go after with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength to be alone with God, get alone with God. If we neglect it, we not only rob ourselves, but others too of blessing, since when we are blessed, we are able to pass the blessing on to others. It may mean less outside work. It must mean more depth and power. And the consequences too will be they saw no man save Jesus only. To be alone with God in prayer cannot be overemphasized. One of the bigger aspects or the greater sphere of influence that Vidivo has in presenting Jesus in a personal and intimate way is that it involved great cost to me personally. I don't get the opportunity to be involved in all the ministerial things that most people get to do. But the quality and the quantity of the effect that these videos have, each one of them, or different ones of them, if you want to say some are better than others, but each one has in some way an effect on a person to bring them into that intimacy with God that because of the nature of we're involved with one-on-one -on -one talking to each other and bringing them to the knowledge of God to hear His voice, there must be that counting the cost and taking up the cross and following Jesus to the exclusion of others that finds me alone much of the time when I would rather of course, be with my wife, or be on a social outing, or be, you know, like the Christian cruises, although I would have a hard time with that.
or the Christian you know, retreats or all the other things that, yes, I've done things in the past, you know, when in my early childhood, you know, Christianity, that, you know, I went to all the concerts and the gatherings and the, you know, giant mega get in the stadium things, you know, whatever, you know. And I was like, oh, you know, it's okay. Done, been there, done that, you know. Now, it doesn't interest me. But you see, there's a reason why it doesn't interest me. And the reason isn't because God isn't there or because I didn't see God there or I didn't experience God, but because I enjoy and I employ the Spirit of God to get me alone with Him so that I can be here to share out there being alone with God, being one-on-one -on -one with God, being intimate and real with the reality of God speaking, talking, visiting, sitting down having coffee, relating in a personal intimate way. Like you may not think that you God does, but He does. That's what you have to do. You can't have all of it. You know, you can't have and stand on the stage with accolades of thousands and then turn around and say, Oh, well, I'm gonna be alone with God, you know. You know, fine, you got five minutes, God, I gotta get back on stage. It doesn't work that way. You see, God is a jealous God. He will have no other gods before him. He will have no one else but you before him. So if you're not willing to, pardon the expression, pay the price, you can't get along with God because you'll always be running off to do something else, to be something else, to employ yourself in something else, to be distracted by something else, to be with the mass media, the mass mob, the social media, the social mob of people's experiences rather than one along with God. You can examine yourself to see if you're in that kind of relationship with Jesus. Stop your internet. Stop your social media. Stop your phone. Get away from all of it. Go someplace where it's dead digitally. Or you can't afford it and just throw it all away. <laughs> we cut back way back. But stop it sometime and see if you still have a relationship with God. If you talk to God daily. If you still spend time with Him. Try weaning yourself off of some of your pet Christianity ideas. You know, like, see if you talk to God without a Bible. See if you talk to God without a devotional. See if you still have a personal relationship in some way with God without there being crowds around or Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, Thursday. See if your faith is real. Because if it is, then when you are brought back to all of these things, the Word of God, the fellowship of the saints, the encouragement and exhortation and worship, the gifts of the Spirit through the Spirit of God, you will be so empowered by the anointing of God that people will wonder how and where did you come from and what are these words that you speak that have so much import and portent to what they're being said that they should affect a person's life and their soul to such a degree that they are changed by watching and seeing and relating that information that Jesus has from the Word of God to the person's emotional being. And spiritually they grow up and become one-on-one -on -one with God also. You see, to get that, you got to give that. To get with God, you got to follow Jesus. To be one-on-one -on -one with God, you got to take up your cross because you will get crucified one way or another. You've got to follow Jesus and you've got to carry your cross because without it, you can't crucify the world and you can't be crucified to the world. You can't experience God one-on-one -on -one unless you're willing to sacrifice something in order to be alone with God.